A new study on a type of fish, called sticklebacks, has found that shy fish actually like to follow other shy fish. The researchers set up groups of three sticklebacks, with different personalities, and played a game of follow the leader. They put the fish in a tank with plastic plants on one end and hidden food on the other. In some groups, a bold fish and a shy fish took turns leading, while another shy fish followed. In other groups, it was a bold fish that did the following. The researchers observed whether the follower fish preferred to join the fish with similar behavior or the one that was different. They discovered that shy fish were more likely to come out from hiding when there was already another cautious fish out there. The bold follower fish didn't seem to mind which leader they followed. However, throughout the experiment, the bold fish led more trips compared to their shyer friends. This was because the bold fish initiated more journeys, regardless of who was following them. We have the Great Exhibition of 1851 to thank for giving us the world's best taxi service. When people went to this exhibition, they were disappointed with their journeys because the cabbies and their horse-drawn carts were really bad and couldn't find their way. So, there was a big public outcry, and the London Authority created the Public Carriage Office, which still exists today. If you walk a short distance to Penton Street, you'll find this office. The public carriage office started licensing all the main taxi drivers in London. Starting from 1851, all taxi drivers had to pass a test called the London Knowledge, which meant they had to have amazing knowledge of London. What does that mean? It means they needed to remember 25,000 streets and how they all connect as well as the main roads in and out of London.
I've mentioned before that a civilization needs art to exist. When we look at the great civilizations in history, they all had a lot of cultural and artistic creations because a society needs to be able to reflect on itself. The greatness of these civilizations was their ability to examine themselves and understand what was happening in their society. The artists and creators of art and culture act as a reflection of the core of society. They show us what is currently being produced and how people are thinking about themselves and their place in society. Art is the tool we use to understand all of that. If art was taken away, we would lose that mirror. We wouldn't be able to see and understand what was happening in Paris during the time of the Impressionists, when people were learning to see the world in a completely different way. During this time, I want to talk about something that we humans might have in common with other animals, and that is emotions. I'll also discuss some new technology called brain imaging, specifically functional magnetic imaging. We'll try to answer some very old questions about how motivation and emotions work. To start, I'll present you with a scenario that you may be familiar with, which was developed by Pavlov over a hundred years ago. In this scenario, a dog hears a sound, waits for a bit, and then gets fed food powder. This process is repeated, and interesting things start happening in the middle of the experiment. Pavlov's study focused on how the dog salivated, and over time, the salivation increased. But other things were happening too. The dog started moving around more, and various things were going on. What we're trying to understand in the experiment I'll describe today is what's happening in the dog's brain that creates that state we call a competitive state.
Today, we will talk about how earthquakes are related to the cracks in the Earth's crust. These cracks in the crust can happen at different depths, from the surface of the Earth to several hundred kilometers down. The center point of the earthquake is called the epicenter, and it is located directly below the Earth's crust. The energy of the earthquake is released and spreads out from this epicenter. The cracks in the Earth's crust are known as faults. By looking at maps of these faults from the center of the Earth, we can figure out where the epicenters are located. As the seismic waves travel away from the epicenter, their strength decreases.